Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for June 20th, 2021, recorded on 1.50 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for a couple of more storms to form somewhere in the Atlantic Basin or the Eastern Pacific over the next couple of days, so stay tuned to that. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that we have Tropical Depression Claudette, which is now uh, over Georgia, now entering or beginning to enter into South Carolina and again, the threat for flooding rainfall and severe weather remains a threat through tomorrow afternoon and evening as this moves off towards the east-northeast. This is now racing off towards uh, the east-northeast and away uh, now. And this will be moving uh, onshore, really. This will be moving back onto the onshore waters there of coastal North Carolina by tomorrow. And then this should be on out of here by really tomorrow evening and on Tuesday. Now, we are also watching a string of tropical waves over the Atlantic right now. We're sitting roughly at about, uh, you know, less than 10 north. And these tropical waves, there's, you know, more energy back off the screen here, will be working its way uh, off towards the west over the next few days. And while there is some very dry, stable Saharan air and just unfavorable conditions north of here, the environment to the south is relatively untapped and is still prime uh, for something to happen. And assuming we don't get a lot of dry air intrusions down across this area, we may just be able to squeak out one uh, tropical cyclone or maybe even two. And uh, we're going to have to start paying attention to that uh, over the next couple of days. And then back here in the eastern Pacific, we have another system to watch with a 30% chance over the next five days. We'll take a look at that all that here coming up. Looking at Tropical Depression Claudette against sustained winds of 30 miles per hour with a pressure of 1,009. This is still hanging on as a tropical depression, uh, but is starting to lose some of its tropical characteristics at this time. Again, the storm right now is centered mainly over Georgia and moving into South Carolina. It will be moving off towards the east-northeast rapidly. And this is going to be clearing the coastline here within 36 hours. This will be well to the north of the Carolinas. Now, uh, again, we are still expecting some reintensification as upper level energy takes over uh, really tonight into tomorrow. And this should become a tropical storm once again, uh, retaining some of the tropical characteristics and then emerge back over water and slightly reintensify some. Now, for this reason, we do have a tropical storm warning that is in effect for parts of uh, North Carolina here, the Outer Banks down to Wilmington. And then we have a tropical storm watch for portions of coastal Carolina, South Carolina here. Again, this is going to, a lot of the winds right now are on the southern side and they're still occurring over the Gulf of Mexico. And all these winds will kind of be kicking up this way over the next couple of days. So this is something that we're going to have to watch kind of carefully as again, you know, we could see some disruptive conditions down here, high surf, even uh, the potential for uh, some of those rip currents and storm surge uh, one to three feet above normally dry ground. So that can cause some problems at that time. Now, if we look here at the uh, visible satellite imagery zoomed out, what we'll notice is that right now we have the storm again, which is mainly over Georgia right now. And you can start to tell that it's really losing a lot of its definition here. We don't really have a very tight core at the moment. Uh, like we are kind of seeing back here over Alabama. It's been very diffuse for its whole entire lifetime, but it's even more diffuse now. But regardless, there is still a closed center of circulation in the low levels at the surface, and that will be moving this way over the next couple of days. Again, but just generally unfavorable conditions exist, and this shouldn't really become that strong once it moves out over the Gulf Stream. But what we notice is that we have a lot of convection that is still spreading uh, not only near the center, but also well away from it. We still have a lot of convection uh, across the Florida Panhandle and all the way to the Gulf of Mexico, which is producing a lot of very heavy rainfall, uh, especially near parts of southern Louisiana, where they've seen you know their fair share of rain over the last couple of days from Claudette. But uh, this is kind of a weak um, you know front that is draped across here. And this is now starting to kind of take on more of those extra tropical characteristics. And again, once it gets into the Gulf Stream, it will reacquire some of those better defined tropical characteristics. But this is kind of now somewhat attached loosely to that front that's kind of draped across here right now. 
you can also see that there is definitely a lot of that cooler and more stable air kind of working uh, on the environment to the north. But again, regardless, this will still bring a lot of very heavy rainfall impacts to parts of the Florida Peninsula and the Florida Panhandle. And then even out here across portions of, of Virginia and even all the way down to South Carolina, the potential for severe weather, including isolated tornadoes, damaging winds, uh, even the potential even uh, in North Florida today for a couple of stronger storms where maybe a brief tornado or two cannot be ruled out. So that's something to kind of keep an eye on. A closer look at the system reveals, again, we still have a you know center of circulation, though it is very broad and diffuse. Again, most of the thunderstorm activity is on the very southern side, removed away from the center of circulation. But you notice that there is some higher, uh, you know, and, and more, you know, cloud cover across this area, higher cloud cover, generally speaking. And that is where some of the uh, better convective activity exists at the moment. And then we have a lot of this onshore flow that's going to be existing here. And again, that's going to be the result of some of that storm surge that could occur across portions of coastal North Carolina. But generally speaking, again, this onshore flow working on the environment, helping to also destabilize it. And this could cause some shower and thunderstorm activity to erupt across this area and produce some isolated tornado potential. But again, if we look here at the surface plot uh, for the last uh, about hour or so, we notice that what we have, again, it will kind of zoom in on this, but we notice our wind barbs here. We do have a turning in the wind barbs in that counterclockwise fashion. And uh, what this kind of represents is that we do have a center of circulation, although very broad and diffuse, that is somewhere up within this vicinity. It's very broad and diffuse, but it's somewhere uh, in this general area. And uh, again, that kind of marks the spot for at the moment. Now, again, this is moving all generally towards the east-northeast. So this will kind of be moving across parts of northern South Carolina. And what that's going to do, again, is pump that onshore moisture. And we notice that we have a lot of winds here on the back side, westerly winds here, uh, which indicate that what we're having here is again, a lot of moisture being drawn up. And over the next couple of days, that's just going to draw this moisture uh, in across this area. So flooding potential is certainly there. And one thing that I think we should also look at is the 850 millibar vorticity map. This is a spin in the atmosphere about 5,000 feet off the ground. And what this kind of represents here, again, these reds and whites, that's the higher cyclonic spin at your 5,000 foot level. And again, kind of what we're having here, this is our system right now, which is Tropical Depression Claudette. And again, Claudette now, you can start to see that we, we still have a very a vigorous circulation, undoubtedly, but it's now becoming strung out with this vorticity bit. It's kind of strung out here and all the way down here. You can kind of make an argument that it's kind of loosely now attached to some frontal boundary that's in here. And what this kind of represents is that this is starting to lose some of its tropical characteristics. Now, it will be being it will be picked up by a lot of mid-level energy that is associated out here right now. This mid-level energy is going to scoot this off towards the east north we east, excuse me, east northeast at a very quick pace here, probably over 20 miles an hour. And what that's going to result in again is some further intensification back into a storm as a result of this mid-level energy coming out of the Midwest. And that should also help to kind of promote some of that strengthening from bear clinic processes, not necessarily tropical, but because of its close proximity to the coast at this point, it is still being able to draw a lot of that moisture. Uh, and we can kind of see that it's being able to draw and tap into all this moisture down here in the Gulf and it is in, even in the Gulf Stream here and pulling that and surging that northward. So you know, whereas, you know, you get a system up here, now you're kind of landlocked and you don't really have a fetch of tropical moisture uh, anymore. But here, because of its close proximity to land, uh, fetch of tropical moisture, again, the main threats here, flooding and isolated tornado threat. Look real quickly here at the H wharf. This is the 60 run valve for 2 p.m. this afternoon. Again, we notice that our storm eventually does reemerge out here. Winds only roughly about 40 knots again. If you get under any of the convective bands that happen to be intensifying, you could see winds, you know, maybe 50, 55 knots, you know, 60 miles an hour, whatever. Uh, and then this kind of moves uh, away from land and is really no concern. 200 millibar winds, just real quickly. Again, not really favorable for much intensification. Again, this Bermuda high that's kind of sitting out here getting stretched and you have kind of just this flow aloft, which is very unfavorable, causing a lot of shear on the 
background environment. So not really expecting anything of significance at this point in time. Now, looking into the future here, this is the 12Z GFS valid for 2 p.m. this afternoon. We have a couple of other things that we're going to have to talk about over the next several days. First of all, again, what's important to notice right now is this little disturbance out here. You can kind of see a little bit of cyclonic flow, and this is the area that we'll be watching for potential Eastern Pacific impacts over the next couple of days. Again, only 30% given by the National Hurricane Center at the moment, but I do suspect those development chances will probably be on the increase. And this is going to be something that coastal Mexico is going to have to watch very carefully. Again, uh, this is going to be of a little bit of concern uh, as some of the models do get it uh, awfully close there to coastal Mexico. So if you have any family, relatives, whatever, you know, nothing to worry about at the moment, but just be aware that there could be something developing that is, you know, need that needs to be monitored, but nothing set in stone and certainly nothing to worry about at this particular moment. So if we move out here on the GFS, we'll go out to about the next uh, 84 hours. And again, this is when our uh, system in the Eastern Pacific starts to kind of take on more of a route. You can kind of see some of that cyclonic vorticity starting to amplify down here. And then we turn our attention to also the Eastern main development region down here, really south of about 10 degrees north. Again, we're sitting here probably about six to seven north here. Now, again, the GFS here in recent runs has been spinning up this area in the Eastern Pacific much quicker. And this is within a five-day period. Those chances uh, significantly go up. And we have a bona fide tropical cyclone that is relatively close to Mexico, only uh, really about 100 miles or so offshore of the coast of Mexico at that point. And then the GFS does move that inland. And again, what we're also going to be watching at that point is the potential for a system to develop in the main development region. If we kind of go back to the earlier runs of the GFS, this is the 6C run, we had a disturbance that was well-defined in the Eastern Atlantic, and that was uh, kind of a long tracking system off towards the West-Northwest. Now, uh, I'm sure that some of you people have, have kind of ventured out and seen what the GFS has done past, you know, hour 240. I've already seen some tweets about it. Don't get all hype about, you know, the next major storm to hit wherever. I'm not going to really say, but my point is that the GFS, you know, out to hour 240, the euro out to hour 240, it's as good as throwing a, a rock and hoping for the, you know, throwing a rock at a window and hoping the window doesn't break. It's not going to be of much use. And, you know, uh, you know, all these wish casting things, no, it just doesn't work like that. So we're trying to break down the actual science here. Does this actually make sense and coincide with a more favorable environment? And what we can actually look towards here. If you kind of pull this up, we can actually look at uh, where the Madden Julian oscillation is expected to be. And for that, we will go to the MJO map here from Michael Ventress's website. And what we'll notice is that, again, this is the week two forecast out to about the, the 4th of July weekend. And we do notice that we do have a pulse of the Madden Julian oscillation that is passing over uh, the Western Atlantic Basin. And it will be moving uh, into the Eastern Atlantic over the next couple of days. And uh, after that point, though, what we're going to be seeing is an African standing wave that will likely end up developing. You can kind of see this MJO pulse that's over Africa. This will be kind of a machine basically printing out these tropical waves that just come out, you know, one after another. And if we kind of jump back to the GFS forecast again, we'll notice that we end up trying to get something to end up developing down here. Uh, but it just can't really do it. And then something ultimately ends up developing out here in the Caribbean after some time. Now, if we look at the 0Z Euro and its solutions, we notice that by day five, we have a system. This is really out by June 25th. We have a system trying to consolidate here on the Euro, and this is becoming more of a plausibility. Again, what we're looking at here in the Mount Julian Oscillation Forecast is this is out to the week of about June 27. Now we do have this uh, kind of standing wave or this MJO pulse that's moving over Africa and this will be continuing to kind of shift towards the east with time. Eventually this will kind of be setting up over the Indian Ocean and Africa pumping out even stronger tropical waves but for the time being we can very clearly see that right now we are going to be having this kind of just sitting over here and this will be a factory for producing strong tropical waves that come off. And the euro suggests that maybe something ends up developing from that. And certainly here on the euro, we have a system developing 
in the Eastern Pacific from that as well. Now, the GFS uh, Ensemble here, this is the 200 millibar wind, and we'll go out here on the GFS. Now, again, we have this MJL pulse that is over Africa right now, and what we'll kind of end up doing, this is by day five, you notice that we have a lot of westernlies that are up here and a lot of easternlies that are out here. Now, we have easternlies, and this would typically go to actually enhance the favorability for uh, increased outflow production. And in fact, if we look here at uh, kind of some of the models, we can see that we end up getting this upper level anticyclone to start developing down here and maybe a window of more favorability. And in fact, if we actually look here, we can see that again, we end up all these little red numbers indicate the potential for a storm in this environment. And you do get some members that are down in the low 1000 millibar range. You got 1003, 1001, you know, 1000. Three, you know, you got 997. So there is some, you know, potential showing up in the models. Uh, the 6C run had a more concentrated defined area, you know, along this wave axis near the Cabo Verde Islands. And certainly if you kind of back that up again, you had even more of a concentration there. Uh, but more so, you also have a concentration out here in the Eastern Pacific as well. Now, just out of curiosity, this is the 60 euro. Now, the euro typically on the free websites, you get about, you know, 12Z and 0Z. Uh, but the ensemble members here, they do run it uh, about like four times a day now, just like the GFS. So this is the 60 run of the euro. And just going out here on the ensemble means here to day five. Uh, this is actually day five here. We got something that is out here coming off the coast of Africa, and we also have a system out here and maybe something sneaky trying to develop near the Lesser Antilles by day five. Now, ultimately, the Euro doesn't really do much with the storm near the Lesser Antilles, but this, it starts to pick up ensemble support, and over half of the ensembles have started to pick up on that. Now, obviously, much more of a concentrated area down here, uh, but... Irregardless, we do have model support that is increasing for what could be a storm or depression to develop out here in the main development region, but certainly nothing is set in stone, and certainly we are far away from knowing what, if any, land impacts or anything this is going to have. So don't get all hype, nothing to worry about, nothing to stress about. It's hurricane season. We should be monitoring this anyway, however. All right. So with that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael O'Malley. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.